Hello YouTube, this is Travis Dunn with MDL, and this is my vlog for May 3rd, 2015. Tomorrow is May the 4th Be With You, which is kind of a made-up holiday for our Star Wars fans. And it'll be a, a, a complete day of Star Wars marathons on TV, and I always look forward to it whenever I can enjoy those. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed the last week's discussion video. Um, I do hope to have more of those with Doc. And we are actually looking at possibly doing a Batman vs. Superman uh, video next. And that could be as early as next week. Um, it could be another week or so before we actually get to sit down and kind of wait and see if any more news comes out about the uh, movie. Um, so we can actually sit down and have a, have a, a pretty lengthy discussion. Not quite as long as the Star Wars, I imagine, but still be interesting uh, have that that conversation back and forth about about the the trailer. Um, in other news, uh, Nepal was hit with a uh, very uh, big earthquake, and uh, you know my thoughts and prayers go out to those affected. Um, it's just utter devastation in, in that country right now, and uh, one of the the big news that that came out talks about a, a four-month-old that was pulled from the rubble um, almost 22 hours after the quake and and as a, as a as a parent as a father that just you know, pulls at my heartstrings and you know it just uh, I just really feel bad about what's happened over there and and obviously there's a there's a lot of aid coming in and um, thank goodness a lot of countries you know are, are definitely helping out as much as as much as they can, even uh, China, UK, obviously the US, and several other countries are are providing money and aid to the country. Uh, hopefully, that aid gets there quickly, and uh, and I definitely hope that uh, that country gets a chance to rebuild. Um, it's always sad to see things like that happen, but um, they do unfortunately. Ah, uh, so um, Age Ultron released this week. Um, no, no teasers here because I haven't seen it. Um, I do hope to plan to go see it here in a few weeks. Um, but I, I will honestly say though, I'm a, I'm a little tired of the in-your-face ads, both on TV and online. It seems like every time you turn around, it's, it's a, you know, it's basically a, either the full or, or bits and pieces of the last trailer that was released before the movie and uh so as, you know as much as i i'm excited to see the movie i also can't say that <laughs> that uh i'm getting a little sick of seeing the ads um i think i was i was watching youtube here i think it was wednesday or thursday and it was seemed like every other ad was was about the movie um and then of course the there was a tie-in this week with um, the, um, crap, Agents of the Shield, <laughs> um, bear with me, I'm still a little la di da and I'll explain how that went, uh, from yesterday, and, uh, so, yeah, it, uh, there was, there was a tie-in, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> it's like, I, I want, I want to see the next episode, uh, sometimes I hate when they do the, the little tie-ins, because, the, usually, it, it, the movie affects the show a little bit, but it isn't as effect as, as you can imagine. But they always just throw these little tidbits out that, you know, kind of add to the story. And uh, I'm actually looking very forward to seeing what happens in the next couple episodes. Um. So, anyway, it, it was a long week. Um, I know I say that, it seems like, but man... I, uh, for some reason, another week of little sleep. I had pretty much about five, six hours every day, and then I immediately got off of work Saturday morning, stayed up all day, uh, went to the Newport Aquarium, uh, which I'll talk to in a minute, um, and then uh, didn't get to bed till about 10 or 11 o'clock Saturday night. So, needless to say, I did manage to sleep about 12 hours. Um, which is probably the only reason I'm still somewhat functioning. 
Um, but I'll be honest, I don't feel like doing much. And uh, I did do a little bit today. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm going to need tomorrow just to kind of catch up. Uh, but one thing I wanted to talk about is the, the shit that kids do. And, and I mean this in the the shit that kids do to just drive you insane. Um, to get under your skin. You know, me and the wife work kind of a crazy schedule. And we do rely on the kids to, to do chores. And I think chores are important. Um, you know, they teach responsibility. They, you know, kids... As much as I, I try to keep my kids, give them the opportunity to be kids, and I still do, I also feel that you have to throw a little bit of adulthood in between, um, because you know at some point in their their life, and you know I somewhat learned the hard way is, you know you there you have to do dishes, you have to do laundry, you have to clean the house. I, I hate these things, <laughs> most men do, most women do. But these are things that you have to do, and so you know you try to try to entrust your kids to teach them how to do it, how to do it right, and all that good stuff. But man, they can really butt heads with you. Um, you know, it's it's been real hard to get the kids to do their chores and do them every day like they're supposed to, and then they they sometimes do these things that just you. Know, and I, I say this not literally, but just figuratively, you want to strangle them. And, and every parent has that moment. And uh, and that'll, that'll lead in, into something here in a moment. But, you know, like my daughter was hiding dirty laundry in her room. And I have no idea why. She's not even doing laundry. She's not the one doing it. Her brother is. And so I don't know why she does it. And she'll hide food in her room and things like that. It just, you know, they, they don't want to clean their rooms, which I I want to be the parent and, and yell at them. But in a way, I kind of feel bad when I do because I was that kid that had a really messy room. When it comes to certain things, I can be I can be very neat and organized. Everything else is pretty much organized chaos. But I'm sure we all have those things that your kids do that just get on your nerves. Kitty cat, will you please stop that? I have one of the two cats in the room, and he's over here using his claws on the bed. I'm about to toss something at him. Stop it. And the other child. He's one of the other children, as I, I like to refer to him. Surprised he's not trying to get in my lap at this point. Um, but anyway, uh, so anyway, I uh, I've gotten some of the parts gathered up for the bike. I actually need to sit down and, and put them on, but I I just didn't really feel like it today. And I did work on the bike a little bit, but that was completely different. Um, I never imagined that owning a motorcycle. It's like I go through the list of things that either. Either I don't like about the bike and I want to change, or, or things that, that obviously, you know, maintenance. About maintenance-wise, the only thing I got left to do is to put brakes on it. Um, but, you know, like I've said in other vlogs, I want to change the gear out. You know, that's $140. Bucks. Um, I want to put a windshield on it. I, I mean, I've seen the gambit of $80 to several hundred dollars for a windshield, depending on the kind you buy. Um... But even just, to, you know, I'd like to change the hand grips. You know, there there's anywhere from 80 to $100. I want to change the foot pegs, kind of the, about the same thing, you know, depending on what ones you get. Um, but it's just like all these little things, just, man, and I sat and added it up, you know, just the, the things that I, I'd kind of like to swap out. And it was like $700. <laughs> I'm like, um, yeah, I'm not going to get away with that. I'm not going to get away with $700 worth of stuff. Oh, and, uh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm not, uh, not going to get away with it with the wife. And so I'm going to have to pick my poison. Definitely going to try to get that gear here in the next couple of weeks and get it ordered and get it, uh, get my stepdad to help me put it in. Um, and we've got to actually do the brakes on his bike, uh, cause he had a caliper lock up on him last, at the end of last season. So we've got to get a new, either rebuild that caliper or get another one, either new or used, and, and 
get you know obviously get pads put around it um but there, those are the two big things for me um the pads i could probably get another season out of them but i will admit pad wise they're relatively inexpensive it, they're expensive considering they're they're two inches you know when you're looking at a normal pad it's six six or eight inches you know being almost the same price you know you have to think in those terms as they are they are kind of expensive for what they are but you know just like on a regular car stopping is very important um but i did uh did do something that that i really hate to do which is i washed it i waxed it and i polished the chrome i hate polishing chrome uh, you know i'll wash a car i'll occasionally wax a car but i hate polishing chrome it was the only thing the only thing on that bike that almost made me think not about not buying it but honestly at the time it was it had a lot of nice stuff on it price was pretty decent um and it wasn't just a it wasn't a stock 883 i mean like i said it's got a 1200 kit it's got lots of chrome it's got an aftermarket seat it's got you know the the drag bar handlebars which i wanted the forward foot controls and it's like i, I found some bikes that had some of this and some of that and but it had all the you know things that i absolutely wanted and it had a bunch of other stuff that was you know i could have done without i'll be honest if i if i had a chance to buy a brand new bike done the way i want it'd be black on black on black on black no chrome exhaust no chrome nothing i want black <laughs> um because i hate i hate chrome but uh you know my but anyway the reason i had to polish the chrome is i had to um i had like surface little spots of surface rust on, on a lot of the chrome and, and you know and i'm sure if anybody that's on a motorcycle knows what i mean like all i have like this chrome trim that, that where all the tail lights are coming off of and the tail lights and um some different little covers that are all chrome and some of it's polished and some of it's kind of pitted and Get, some of that pitted stuff looks really nice to me as far as giving it a bit of a patina um without because it's not really chrome chrome it's like I said, it's more of a polished look on, on a lot of the covers but like i said some of that stuff had had a little bit of surface rust i mean i had it on my back porch i for the most part had it covered um however it just uh you know wind and moisture and and, and just kind of one of those things that started to build up so i took and used uh a product called never doll and if you've never used this product it is a really awesome product but I'll, I'll warn you if you're sensitive to petroleum products it is petroleum based um and it's one of those things you'll you can buy a can and have it for 10 years as long as you keep it sealed up in in its can um it, it for the most part will last damn near forever and it's almost this like cotton wadding is the only way i can describe it it has this stuff in it and i don't really know what it is but i know it stinks um but when you're dealing with stuff like that like like bumpers and you know old or chrome bumpers and stuff like that and and you can use it on some you know aluminum parts and whatnot it uh really cleaned up that uh can i turn that down i'll call her back I told you she always does this when I'm doing a vlog, and I literally waited till really late. And she's out grocery shopping, and I waited really late to uh, to do this vlog just so I could try to keep from from doing that to me. But you know, it happens. I'm not gonna edit it out. So, um, but I will say, if you're a diehard Chrome fan and you want perfection on your bike, which honestly, if you want Chrome on a bike. And wanted perfection probably shouldn't own a bike <laughs> it's gonna get rain it's gonna you know it's gonna get stuff on it it's not gonna be perfect but you know this stuff just little elbow grease cleans that stuff right up makes it all nice and shiny again you buff it off um and i say buff i'm i really just mean rub it off it's not like it's you know it takes a lot of physical labor you spend more labor rubbing that uh, wadding against the the chrome than you do actually wiping it off but you wipe it clean with a clean towel um and, and it definitely uh definitely improves <laughs> the look of the chrome 
And so I've got I got some pieces I probably I'm gonna go over again with here in a week or two, but um, you know for the most part it it's done and. Let's see, here's the thing I don't understand. All right, turn this down. Why is this not going down? Let's see, next time it's up. So, anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I made it, like I said, I washed it, I waxed it. Um, and I don't wax my vehicles very often, but not with the actual wax. And, and I will say, uh, there, and I'm sure I'll, there'll be some debate about this, but if you're going to wax, buy real Carbuna, I, know, I probably mispronounced that, but buy real regular wax. Um, whether it be liquid or, you know, in the little tubs, almost like a paste, um, real wax is, is really something, something unique and special. So, yeah, like I said, I got the bike cleaned up. I did take it for a short ride today, um, but I just wasn't really feeling it. I, I didn't feel like going very far. I was going to go up to Iron Pony, but it's like, started going out and, and it was wind was kind of starting to blow and I, I just, like I said, I wasn't in it. So I, I took a short ride, felt good, you know, and uh, I parked the bike back uh, on the porch. But uh, like I said, it's it's a work in progress. Um, but yeah, like I said, at least I, I made a little progress on, on the looks because I was, I was getting a little ticked off when I saw that that chrome starting getting a little rust off. Mm, excuse me. Um, but anyway... So we went to the Newport Aquarium on Saturday. Like I said, I've been up all day and I managed to, oh, excuse me. So, but it was a lot of fun. It was something we had never done. Um, I didn't realize there was so much to do even outside the aquarium. Um, there's lots of restaurants, there's street performers. I mean, they have all kinds of stuff going on and, and you know, it's all, you know, if you can park in their parking garage and just walk around up, it's literally like, um, and I'll show a picture here. The, you know, you can look out onto onto the Ohio River. Um, there's actually boat tours and stuff like that that you can do. Um, they even have an amphibious vehicle um, that you can, uh, for a certain amount of money, um, go on. But it's only certain times of the year and based on weather, and, and it wasn't open yet. So my wife, I think they call it the duck tour or something. My wife really wanted to do it, but it, like I said, it wasn't wasn't on yet and uh but it's just over the bridge into kentucky outside of cincinnati um it's a, it's a reasonable price just to go um now they will kind of nickel and dime you to death on some of the little extras i will say we did the backstage tour it's kind of cool but you know we got a special deal on the whole thing so you know i would say skip any of the extras just just pay the fee go in and take the kids and let them have some fun. You can go through it a couple of different times. Um, hell, I probably went through it like six times because, you know, obviously dealing with Girl Scouts, you know, have to go back in and catch up with different little groups of the girls. So, but I took lots of photos, um, took some 4K video, so I'm probably going to put some of that 4K video together and, you know, work on some of my editing skills. Um, and then uh, we stopped at Ikea on the way home. Ikea is one of those places, it's like, it's kind of a love-hate relationship. Um, we didn't do the full, you know, we walked around, but we didn't do the full tour like we did the last time we were in there. But, man, do I always want to spend money in there. And, and even worse is that we're get, we're finally getting one local. Um, it's only going to be about 20 minutes away, where it's like almost an hour and a half now from where I'm at um, to the one in Cincinnati. But um, the, if any of you, if you've never been to an Ikea store and you got one close, go take a look. It's interesting. Um, but one of the things we, one of the, two of the main reasons we went, one, we kind of need some more glasses. Um, we've broken a lot of cups and, you know, we've kind of moved away from pl the plastic ones and we need some more glass ones. It's like every time I go to find a glass, it's, they're in the washer, dishwasher. So um, they have some of the cheapest glasses you can buy. They're 89 cents a piece. You just can't beat that. Um, for, for a regular, you know, drink glass. And, you know, it's the kind that's got, like, the ridges at the bottom. So 
good solid glass with you know we've had we've had some for years and I think we've only broken one or two in that time frame so I bought a whole slew of those also bought some um, shot glasses so I can finally actually have shot glasses in the house I can't count the number of times I, you know I want to make a mixed drink but I don't have a proper measurement well I have a proper shot glass to make that measurement now and in fact I'll have a slew of them if we decide to start doing shots um, and then we also bought some, uh, juice glasses. So they're kind of, you know, they're like two or three inches, about a quarter to just under half a, a normal glass size. Um, you, you always run into that issue when you want some juice or something and you don't, but you don't need a whole glass and you, it's kind of a waste. So I got a, I got a few of those. I didn't get a ton of those. Uh, but I, I definitely wanted to grab some other things. Uh, but the other reason we stopped there it was to actually eat dinner and if you've never eaten dinner there it's kind of interesting they have their their own little cafeteria and it's and i call it it really is a cafeteria they have a limited menu um, but a bunch of the girls got ribs you can get like a half a rack of ribs and a side and i want to say like yeah it was a like a cornbread or a roll for like eight bucks you really can't beat it, and it's a de decent set of ribs. It's, even the ones that had never been in there before, I was kind of surprised the quality of the ribs. Now I won't say they're gourmet or anything like that, but solid for eight bucks, it was solid. I always get the Swedish meatballs. It's one of the few places I can actually get them that don't taste like crap. Um, but I always ask for the extra sauce. They, they never put enough uh, of the uh, the actual, you know, like gravy sauce on top so but yeah i, I always love getting swedish meatballs when i'm there um so that was, that was kind of fun managed to spend a couple hours but i did drive down um i was feeling okay to drive down but by the time I, we were done there it's like my back was just oh my god my back was killing me my, my knee was like twitching and then and, and I was tired, and, and so, I, and I didn't really nap on the way back. I kind of, I kind of like leaned over and just kind of closed my eyes, but I didn't really sleep. Uh, not till we got home, but I did have some moments of kind of in and out. So, but like I said, I did shoot some some nice core K video and, and some pictures and things like that. So, I'm probably like I said, I'm probably going to put together a little bit of a montage video. And I want to see. Um, how well that 4k video especially with me you know doing the hand shots um not having stabilization i want to see how that that, work, that goes um a couple of other things i, I kind of want to talk about in my vlog the tesla announced the tesla bat uh home battery um and it's about 3500 dollars for the battery now obviously there's install cost and, and you got to get an inverter and, and i think all that but but $3,500 for the battery, it's like 10 kilowatt battery, um, not really a bad price, and there's been kind of a, it was almost the thing when they, they came out with, you know, the first cars, people, him and his claws, um, they kind of wanted them to, to expand into other markets, and, and I think this is a good market for them, I mean, more and more people are, are putting solar panels. I have considered it many, many times. Um, I wouldn't be surprised in a, in a couple more years. I, I will probably bite the bullet and, and, and do it because electricity costs are just getting ridiculous. I mean, I'm paying in the summertime, I'm paying $400 almost a month of electricity. Um, I'd say my average bill is $125, $150. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, it's just it's just one of those things people people say you know that these things you know aren't efficient enough and blah 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 but they're getting there and while they're not the end-all be-all situation you know to, to end our our need for the power grid and whatnot it is one step to making that affordable and there's a lot of controversy with it and you always have to take into consideration when you hear something from an electric company they're in it for them they're in it for the profit and and unfortunately that's a th that's a kind of a bad thing when it comes to american capitalism you know especially with uh we've seen it with fuel we've not you know we're starting to see it with utilities where they're 
you know, the prices are, are going up and up and up. They're not upgrading their technology, but their profits keep going higher and higher and higher. You know, we have uh, the PUCO, who it seems like every time we turn around, AEP, who's our local energy supplier, keeps jacking up the rates. They keep getting increases. It's, it, it's gotten ridiculous, um, the kind of money that, that we're spending uh, for, for electricity. And, you know, we, we do have some coal fire plants here in Ohio. And to me, you know, natural gas is right now is so cheap. And, you know, I don't, I, I think I, I didn't even crack a hundred dollars for my gas bill in the winter time. And that's the sad part. If you really think about it, my, I have gas and electric, Mo, you know, my house obviously is electric, but all my major appliances, hot water tank, you know, is all, all gas. And, so, and, you know, like I said, my winter gas bill wasn't even $100. During the summer, it's $35. So, you know, and I think that's just like the minimum charge. But, yeah, it's it's getting ridiculous. But the Tesla battery, I, I think, is a good first step. It'll definitely help those that want to convert over, you know, to um, having solar and things like that. But it'll, it'll actually charge during the off hours. So at night and stuff, if it needs to charge up off the grid it, it'll charge up and then and then distribute that back out at peak hours um, to help balance not only the grid but to help your electric bill so you know certainly a chance to save yourself money and like I said it can be tied in with wind and, and solar and all that to help charge and they are building commercial units for businesses I imagine companies like Target I think they've already said that they're, they're looking at, they're gonna do some testing in some stores and things like that you know they're they're definitely also looking to reduce their cost, um, and I think Tesla that's going to be probably a bigger market than their cars. Even though I'm waiting for the day that I can get that twenty thousand dollar Tesla car um, that'll do you know two hundred eighty to three hundred fifty miles. That's what I want. I really actually and I like the the concept of the Volt. Giving the option, you know, if you're running long distance or, you know, getting to an area that, that you can't necessarily, um, you know, charge up the, the car, you can still run on traditional gasoline. Gasoline is not going away um, anytime real soon. So um, I like that concept, but I want more of that Tesla into that, that type of car with a little bit of, of a motor that just generates electricity when when the need arises, we'll get more and more, you know, mileage out of the battery. Um, I think the Chevy Volt goes 30 or 40 miles or something of that nature before the engine has to kick in. So, you know, like I said, I, uh, you start getting into the 200 plus miles and then having, elect or having a gasoline motor to, to generate electricity, I think that is the the best combination that you can get. But I, I really appreciate everything that Tesla is doing in this market. And, uh, but yeah, it, uh, all right. So the last thing, and I apologize, my wife, uh, called the kids and made them disturb me. So if you saw the weird pause edit, edit, I had to edit it out. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is about the Baltimore riots. And, and I understand the anger in the black community, um, you know, for, for when things like this happen. But in the same boat, this isn't completely an issue with black people. I mean, this happens too, but obviously when it ever happens to a black person, especially here in the last couple of years, it's become a big issue. And I, I, I you know, I am 100%, you know, peaceful protest. That is your right. Uh, you know, that that is your right to do. And, and But what isn't your right is to hurt other people and destroying property. And that is just something that, that people need to understand that, you know, you have a right to protest. You have a right to be angry. You do not have the right to burn down businesses, destroy cars, destroy other people's property. Frankly, I think, I'm beginning to think those type of, of actions, people that get arrested for that, need to be charged with hate crime. I, I think they should be charged as a federal hate crime because that's what it ultimately is. They're, they're hating on something else for some other reason. Um, but you, you, I don't know, that, that probably stirs some controversy, I'm sure, but it's just one of those things that I, it just drives me insane to watch, you know, people do something, 
you know, two wrongs don't make a right. And, and it's a bit of an old fashioned thought, but I think it still applies. You know, like I said, peaceful protests, peaceful, you know, that, that type of thing is perfectly within your rights. Absolutely. Um, but what some of these people have been doing with the rioting is just, just insane and, and it needs to stop. But I will say, and, and I'll kind of show the video, um, uh, of probably what should be the mom of the year and she's been getting a lot of attention i know she's been on some different talk shows it's made pretty much every news um since this whole thing started um 16 year old son ends up he even he's even covering his face so you kind of knew he was going to do something bad but apparently she had a feeling that he was he was going to join the riots and um so she went down down to the thing and, and Sure enough, she found found him, and apparently he was even about to start throwing rocks at cops. Um, and, and that woman just just smacked the living hell out of her son. You know what? Good for you. <laughs> and I think that's that's a sentiment that has been repeated several times. But you know what? The boy the boy deserved his ass beaten, and he got it, and he he took it. Um, and, it, and like I said, it, the video went viral. Um, I believe it was a it was a news reporter uh, that was recording uh, what was going on down there that actually caught it. But yeah, she just way lays on his ass, and uh, and I would too. I would definitely kick my kid's ass if they if I I wouldn't care if he was sixteen or thirty. Um, you know, if I I knew they were going to do that, I'd be uh, my seventy year <laughs> my seventy year old ass would be down there beating the crap out of him too. And, uh, you know, she didn't hurt him, hurt him, but she, she you know, it, it, as a parent, sometimes you gotta, your kids need, need a wake up call and, and sometimes a, a foot to the ass. And, you know, as, as, as parents used to say, it's something that needs. And, and I will imagine he won't do that again. <laughs> and, uh, but I've showed both my kids that video and, and I've explained to them that, you know, there are times when, when, like I said, protesting is, is, is God-given right here in America, and, and you know, power to the people that do it for the right reasons. I will say sometimes this stuff is getting blown way out of proportion, and I really think that uh, you know people need to step back and and not completely trust the mainstream media. Um, they're just spewing out all kinds of stuff, and sometimes it's it's being regurgitated over and over and over again, and people take it as fact. And until we, until we always know the facts, we we don't we can't react. We need to we need to be vigilant. If we have concerns, we need to post those concerns, and and, and we need to make sure that that the proper answers get uh, get out before before we make rash decisions about things. And you know, too many people are want to react. Um, to a situation without knowing all the facts, and um, I I always try to I always try to take in the facts before I make make a, a decision or a choice or 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 make a an assumption of anything. I try to take the facts that are in front of me, and I certainly you know if things don't add up. I'll I'll look for for till the facts do add up, and uh, people don't do that anymore. Um, I try to I try to make my kids do that, even though they're sometimes just as bad. They'll react to to a situation without always knowing the the whole the whole story behind it. So that's that's kind of my word for thought at the end. Is you know sometimes, like I said, kids need a good ass whipping, <laughs> and uh, you know definitely, like I said, don't don't take what's put in front of you. Take it at face value and don't. You know, wait until you've got all the facts before you react. So, I guess that's, like I said, my food for thought. Anyway, this is a little bit of a long-winded video. Uh, I had some things I wanted to get off my chest. And and I apologize for the little edit that I had to make um, with my wife calling in. So, um, next week's vlog should be pretty much as normal. Uh, like I said, I may try to, try to do that Superman versus Batman. Or Batman versus Superman, however, however it is. I may try to do that next week if I can, um, but I just have a feeling, timing-wise, that's probably not going to work. 
So, uh, hopefully everybody has a great week. Um, the weather is supposed to be nice around here. Hopefully the weather is nice around you. Um, you know, if you ride motorcycles, get a chance to, to get your bike out and, and dust, dust it off. So, um, everybody have a, a great day and hopefully have a great week. We'll talk to you later. Signing off.